Today, I want to talk about a topic that I've never addressed on video, and this will probably be the first and the last time. I want to talk about voting. Yeah, voting. Those who know me well know that no matter where I am in the world, I typically go silent or change the subject any time the discussion turns to politics. Even when, or I should say especially when, the election at hand is described as, quote, the most important election in our lifetime. My first time to vote was in 1980. I was convinced that nothing less than the survival of the United States and Western civilization was on the ballot. So I not only voted, I volunteered to campaign in my hometown of Jackson, Mississippi, going door to door and pleading with citizens to vote. And I volunteered to serve as a poll watcher in a precinct that had historically been infamous for electoral fraud and voter suppression. I was honored to help save my nation and preserve civilization. Four years later, the same people said the same thing, that this time it's the most important election ever. And this is not just an American thing. For many years, I heard the same thing in the Philippines, that this election is the most important and the nation as we know it is hanging in the balance. And so here we are again on the eve of the most important election in American presidential history, at least since the last election four years ago. As I said, I want to talk about voting. Not necessarily voting in the upcoming American presidential election, but voting in general, no matter which election and no matter which nation. Considering that the Bible has little to say about politics or electoral politics, that they didn't actually have elections, back in those days. I want to look at some wisdom from John Wesley taken from his journal dated October 6, 1774. Here's the quote. I met those of our society, and by society he means his church family. I met those of our society who had votes in the ensuing election and advised them, one, to vote without fee or reward for the person they judged most worthy. Two, to speak no evil of the person they voted against. And number three, to take care that their spirits were not sharpened against those that voted on the other side. The fact that Wesley wrote this indicates that even 250 years ago, there was not a consensus as to how a Christian should vote. Whether you'll be voting in the upcoming United States election or voting in a highly contested election somewhere else in the world, here's how we can take Wesley's wise advice to heart. First, as Wesley said, vote for the most worthy person. A simple yet often forgotten point about voting is it's your vote, so you decide. Don't worry about the pundits. Don't worry about pleasing your peers. Don't worry about pleasing your pastor. Wesley wisely said to vote for whom you think is most worthy. For Americans, that means it doesn't matter which party, if they're a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent, or a write-in. The only way I know how to evaluate who is most worthy of my vote is to consider their leadership history, which points to their character, their experience, and their abilities. That is best accomplished by looking at what that person has actually done in the past in life and leadership. Unfortunately, too often we're left with two candidates that fell on this evaluation. That's why it might be helpful to also evaluate not only the person, but also the platforms, the policies, and the people who will influence that candidate if elected. Yes, a person's name is on the ballot, but that name represents much more than that one person. And that brings us to Wesley's second admonition. Quote, speak no evil of the candidate you voted against. In an election season, when many people feel that they are in fact choosing between the lesser of two evils, it can be tempting to justify your vote by simply describing how evil the other candidate is. But as Christians, we're called to a different standard. Our words, even critiquing a candidate, need to be full of grace. 
And our attitude should be that of humility, recognizing that apart from God's grace, we are no better and no less sinful than even the most corrupt and morally bankrupt candidates. Like our least favorite candidate, we have all sinned and all fallen short of the glory of God. That fact should temper our tongues and our fingers and stop us from speaking and tweeting self-righteous, judgmental diatribes aimed at the other side. Before speaking or tweeting evil of another human, let's remember the words of Paul in Romans 3. There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Now, watch this. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The venom of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So much of this text talks about the words that come out of our mouths that are displeasing to God. Let's not let that happen during this political process. And that brings us to Wesley's third and final point in his voting exhortation. Wesley pleaded with his followers, do not sharpen your soul against people who voted differently than you. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, I don't know how someone who calls themselves a Christian can vote for X candidate. If you find yourself saying or thinking that, I would suggest that either your circle of friends is too small or that you've spent way too much time in the echo chamber of social media and cable news where you usually only see the news feeds of people who already think exactly like you do. I guarantee you people in your local church are not all voting for the same person or for the same reasons. Even if you've wrestled and prayed over your decision and you're convinced that it's the best vote a Christian can make, know that other committed Christians who have put in similar thought and prayer will be voting for another candidate. Please accept Wesley's words and guard your heart from pride and judgment. We can't afford to allow the vitriol and disunity of the culture to creep into the church. Voting is a privilege that millions around the world do not have. If you have the right to vote, please exercise that right. But when you do, do it for the honor of God. Resist the temptation to demonize those who vote differently than you do. And whether or not this is the most important election in the history of all elections, whatever the outcome, never forget that Jesus is Lord and that He is building His church and the gates of hell will not prevail.